Hello YouTubers, this is Mustafa. This is the third video in my series, How to Use AI to Enhance Your Design Workflow. In the last video, we saw how to adjust some settings to make Automatic 1111 work smoothly on a low VRAM machine, we also had a quick overview of the user interface, and if you don't know what I am talking about, I encourage you to watch this video first, and then come back here to be able to follow me easily. In this video, we will continue where we left off with the same image we generated of the haunted house and try to make it look even better. We will follow these steps. Load the image data from the previous video. Add a LoRa to make the image more nightmarish. Add a negative embedding to enhance the output quality. Change the sampling steps and method to create more details. Let's get started. First, we need to load the image data from the previous video. To load the data of a certain generation, you can simply go to the PNG Info tab, and here load the image you want to extract data from. Mind you, this image must be generated by Automatic 1111, to be able to extract info from it. Here you will find all the creation parameters, like the prompt, the negative prompt, the sampler, the steps, and the seed. Simply click on Send to Text to Image button, this will take you to the text to image tab with all the parameters correctly loaded. And because it also copied the seed from the image, if we click on the generate button, it will make exactly the same image as we had before. Now that we have loaded the image data, let's see how we can make it more nightmarish with Allura. Allura is a trained model that can add a certain style or concept to your image generation. It is also small in size compared to checkpoints, like 100 to 200 megabytes, and sometimes less. But unlike checkpoints, we can load more than one LoRa at the same time, and without changing the selected checkpoint. You can find many LoRas on Civit AI. By clicking on the filter icon and selecting LoRa. You can use the search if you know what you are looking for, or you can also filter once more here for a character a style, a concept, and so on. Let's try the nightmarish AI Laura, I think it will work well with our haunted house creation. You will find a link to this Laura in the description below. Click on the download button, when prompted to save, navigate to your stable diffusion web UI folder, and here go inside models folder, then Laura folder, and save here. To use it, we need to go back to Stable Diffusion and click on this button with the pink icon under the Generate button. Here click on LoRa tab, you may also need to click on Refresh to load the appropriate LoRas for the Stable Diffusion version of your model. LoRas that are based on Stable Diffusion 1.5 will not work with models that are based on Stable Diffusion 2 or 2.1. Here you will find the nightmarish AI LoRa that we downloaded. Click on it. It will add this LoRa to your prompt. Note how the LoRa is added between those angular brackets, with a colon and a number. This number represents how much the LoRa will affect the generation, sometimes we may need to lower this number to give the checkpoint a space to do its thing. Click on this icon one more time to hide this window. This certain LoRa has a trigger word as well, you can find that in the model page here. This means we have to include this word in our prompt alongside the LoRa. Let's generate. What do you think of this image? Do you like it better than the original one? I think it is too much, let's reduce the effect of the LoRa by typing 0.7 instead of 1, and let's try one more time. Nice! Let's make the seed random to generate different images. You can do that by typing minus 1 here or by clicking on this button with the dice icon and try again. Good. To enhance the output quality, we can use a negative embedding in the negative prompt box. An embedding is a small file that contains some information about an image or a concept. A negative embedding is trained on bad output images from stable diffusion, and if used in a negative prompt can greatly improve your results. You can find many embeddings on Civit AI by filtering for textual inversion which is another name for embedding. And in the search type negative. We will try easy negative. 
you will find a link to this embedding in the description as usual. Click on the download button, and when prompted to save, navigate to your stable diffusion web UI folder, then go inside embeddings folder and save here. Back in stable diffusion, click once more on show hide extra network button, and switch to the textual inversion tab. You may need to refresh the list to see the embedding we downloaded. Here we go. Make sure you highlight the negative prompt box before you click on the embedding card to add it there. It is that simple. Hide this window and let us try again. Nice. Finally, let's increase the sampling steps and use a different sampling method to create more intricate details. The sampling steps determine how many iterations the neural network will perform to generate the image. The higher the steps, the more detailed the image will be, but also the longer it will take. The sampling method is the algorithm that the neural network uses to create the image. There are different methods that have different strengths and weaknesses. DPM++2 Mkaras is very good at creating intricate details. Let's change the sampling steps to 45 and the sampling method to DPM++2 Mkaras and try one more time. Can you spot the difference between these two images? Big difference. That concludes our session today. We will discuss even more advanced features in future videos. And please please, if you find this video helpful click the like button, it really helps with the algorithm so this video will reach more people. Thank you very much and see you in future tutorials.